Welcome back to the DNBR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbooks. This episode also brought to you by LaCroix Hockey and the Avalanche Alumni Association. We are very happy to bring back Milan Hayduk. Was on at the end of our last show. <laughs> now back again five minutes later. Hayduk, thank you for coming on the show. Absolutely. Thanks How'd, for having me. Oh, anytime. How'd you feel about the game tonight? You know what? It was it was interesting game. Like quite frankly, I the first two periods I was not watching that much. We were in a, <laughs> up sitting in the suites, suite, uh, talking to a bunch of people I haven't seen for a long time. So I was not completely dialed in in the game. Then started watching the third. Uh, you know, it, it looked like the game was out of hand, and all of a sudden the ass started coming back, and uh, and the the fourth goal all of a sudden it, it, you know could you know could uh, change the outcome of the game completely. Uh, I haven't seen, you know, what? supposedly there was some kicker motion. I, it was hard to tell, uh, but I, I, I like the energy at the end. It, it looked like we we're heading to OT and, and we're not. So <laughs> I, yeah. I want to ask an elite NHL goal scorer, should you be able to kick the puck into the net? I think he should. Yeah. yeah. If you want to increase scoring, why not? Like, yeah. I mean, absolutely. It should be, you know, like uh, teams playing really tight defense. Sometimes someone is just tight checking you. Why you can't use, uh, use the foot and just kick it in? Why not? I, I would be for it, absolutely. The argument being that you have knives on your feet and <laughs> you right. know, kicking yeah. motions. Yeah, but like you're kicking the puck, you're not slicing anyone. Right, but yeah. I think it's I think the, that's the fear though, is that somebody actually like full on tries to kick a puck and Oh, I mean like a full soccer. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, and then you know you've got the blade up in the and yeah, that's yeah, you got some I mean point I tend to it, I yeah. tend to agree with you that uh, why not? Let's just go all in with it. Let, yeah, let yeah, goal scoring you, be you, goal you, scoring. You, you take the you know the gray area out of it, right? Like yeah. everything would yeah. count. It doesn't yeah. matter if it if it's if it's you you attending, you know, attempt or not doesn't matter. If it crosses yeah. the goal line, it's a goal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as a, as a person like I like to score, like why not? Like, <laughs> and, 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 and help you can so get. This is it. You yeah. just don't want goals taken away yeah. from no, you. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, fans, do you want to see goals? Oh, of uh, course, right? of course. And you'd see some new ones too. Yeah. Punch it, I mean, headbutt well, it. Well, I mean, guys I remember, would get very you innovative you with it in the playoffs a couple years ago when Andrew Shaw headbutted yeah. that puck in yeah. and they disallowed yeah. it. But it was awesome. Like it yeah, was yeah. Like, I had actually no idea that it doesn't count. I'm like, why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't know that was the rule. And apparently, yeah, they were either. like, yeah, yeah headbutting <laughs> a pucks is not kosher in the NHL. Not, not, it, it was cool to me. Yeah, uh, you can do I it don't in understand. Soccer. I don't understand what the like. I can at least understand you're kicking pucks in. There's a blade argument, but if you're headbutting a puck in, absolutely, you just got game. Right, right. <laughs> let, let, let it happen. Yeah, we'll open I, it up. It, scoring, we, we more, scoring more, is fun. More scoring, right? yeah. scoring it's, is it's fun. fun to see goals. You, you don't want to see games two one games. You want to see six five seven six. Yeah. yeah. You, are are you listening? Not. Islanders <laughs> and fair yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Two one games aren't fun, y'all. Yeah. Goalies aren't I think, people. I think, all right. I think coaches think you know two one game they're you're, they're out, out coaching the other team. Seven six games they feel like they're not involved as much. As a players, we will take it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <players>. <laughs> yeah, now that now that footer is gone, you know. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> footer probably wouldn't take it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. In his career, he should have taken what he could get when it came to the goals, you know. Right, but you know, he, he had a good touch. Yeah, like you know, when yeah. when he had a breakaway, it, it was usually in. He's he scored a goal. I remember a game, home game. He he comes out of the penalty box, gets a breakaway, scores. Uh, so when he had a chance, he buried. It. Oh, so, he scored some big goals over the years yeah. too. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah. So did you? Yeah, some few. I got lucky here I'm, and there. You know, <laughs> well, that's modest. I, well, no, no. Let, hang on. I got a couple questions for you here. Yeah. First of all, what inspired the swim dive? Yes, thank you. We gotta know. Uh, good question. Uh, you know, like, there's really nothing, not much behind it, other than a uh, couple days prior to that we had a rookie party. So we went hard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then I was just not thinking. I was I obviously pumped, score overtime goal against uh, Eddie Belfour and in, in Dallas. And uh, and I blacked out and started swimming. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we like to hear. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, that's and guys kind of you know, like, you know, if you saw the tape, uh, they want to kind of go and celebrate with me, and then they saw that. I'm like, well, everyone's going to stay back. This is not good. Uh, so that's why it's, what is it, top 10 worst celebration or something? Oh, like yeah, that? it has yeah, to it, be. It, it, it's, it's up there. Yeah. <laughs> not best, worst. Yeah. No, 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 best. Yeah. Yeah. Best, yeah. for sure. No, no, no. Best. Especially coming from a guy such as yourself yes. that was so quiet. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 
Loved to, it. To see the outburst of personality yeah, it was absolutely. great. Sometimes yeah. you, don't, you don't think, right? You, you, you let the emotions go, and that's yeah. what exactly happened, I guess. Well, and you think, yeah. you think about some of the most iconic avalanche moments over the years, and, you know, Joe Sackick scored how many goals, and one of his most memorable moments is him fighting Doug Gilmore. That's right. Yeah. And you know, he beat the crap out of him. He did beat the crap out of him. <laughs> like, oh, I don't mess with Joe. He rephrased it that <laughs> way. Joe has it in it. But yeah. He did. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely should have phrased it that way because he beat up Doug Gilmore. <laughs> he was not a slouch in he his did. career. No. Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> and fun. that's why that's why it's it's you know all, all the goals and the assists and all that. Yeah. Like that's the stuff that punching you rem- a dude in the face. Just, just people that's, remember that. That's yeah. the stuff that you remember. You remember <laughs> if I were to have surveyed this entire bar before tonight, what's your number one Milan Hayduk memory? I bet that celebration comes up. A lot of people probably would say that. I bet you that celebration comes up more than anything else. Something unique, and yeah, people will remember that. You know, before before we went live, you asked us. You asked us. You know. So what do you guys think? Is this the Avalanche year? And I'm I'm curious because I want to maybe bring up a painful memory, but draw at least a parallel in doing so. But the plane ride after 2000 in Dallas. What kind of conversation is that? You know, because that's that was such a great team with yeah. so much talent. Right. And you're looking at this current Avs team that had such yeah. a painful exit of its own. How does the team grow from that? Yeah, I think like uh, the flight from from Dallas. Basically, the conversation was, uh, I, I think in the playoffs, obviously home home ice advantage is huge. Game seven, it, it doubles on triples. You you, I, I think generally, I don't know the stats really, but seems like or at least uh the game sevens i've been part of uh usually the home team won so it was a big deal to just finish the regular season as high as possible uh obviously next year uh the 2001 we uh, we won the president's trophy and you have the home nice advantage throughout the game seven so uh 99 and 2000 we lost both game sevens in dallas right game sevens on the road not easy thing to do dallas that time they had a phenomenal team so yeah. Uh, I think the conversation was more like, you know, let's put more in a regular season, so we have that advantage. Game seven and, and uh, 2001 when uh, we won the cup, uh, we used it a couple times, right? Uh, LA uh, round two and and uh, finals against Jersey, game seven again. So uh, that was kind of the conversation. Uh, you know, these guys obviously had a couple years of disappointment in the playoffs. Uh, I, I I believe this is their year, like it. I do. You know, this is really a solid team. Uh, guys coming in their prime. Uh, obviously, you, you need to be lucky here and there. Bounces has to go your way. Injuries, guys have, have to stay healthy. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. the, of course. The key, guys, yeah. the key guys have to stay healthy. So a lot of things has to come together uh, before you win the cup. It, you're in a very unique position. You're one of the people here that we can talk to that have actually played with current Avalanche players in Gabe Landeskog. In fact, you're the one who gave him the captaincy. Right. Can you can you speak to him at all? Uh, what's it like playing next to Gabe? Obviously, you played with him when he was very young, but he seems to be following in your footsteps as the next guy to be a lifetime Av. Well, I mean, he definitely is, and now he signed the, the you know uh, that next deal, but he's gonna basically be Av forever. Uh, so I remember him, uh, when he came into the league, he was really mature for, uh, so he, was he 18 or 19, yeah. right? 18, 18, yeah. 18. Yeah. Uh, very mature for, for his, uh, for his, for his age. Like definitely, uh, people I knew or myself, like I, I was nowhere near where he was. I, I, I want to say he was probably, I think he was a captain in, um, uh, in OHL, wherever he, I think he played yeah. OHL, like yep. he was a captain. So, uh. That maybe had something to do with it, more responsibility in a young age. Uh, but he uh, he was phenomenal. You knew like he's mentally so strong, and and physically ready too. Like he he was a big boy. Like you know, hmm. obviously that even at 18 he had to be over 200 pounds, bigger guy. Uh, he could handle it. Uh, yeah, he was he was solely right from from the beginning, and uh, and uh, I think he, he's the right captain. He, he he's gonna lead them to a Stanley Cup. I, I I strongly believe that. Let's let's back up a little bit. What was it like for you taking over? Uh, b- being captain after yeah. after Fuller, yep. yep. yeah, it was it was uh, obviously super, I was super uh, proud of uh, being captain, uh, following footsteps Joe and and, and Footer. Uh, 
obviously it was it was one season we didn't have a good season it was like it, it just we didn't have the the top team it was not the same uh, we didn't have the same players that he had in the past but anyways it was a great experience for me it was it's uh you know you, you you play with a little bit more you know you have chip on your shoulder like it's it's you have the uh the franchise i mean not quite a little bit on your shoulders so yeah. uh yeah I, it, it was really it was unique for me and and a really great experience even that it was not a great season i think we end up i mean we i think we were almost i think that's the that last we get a first overall pick out of it or a second overall pick so not successful season but i still enjoy it yeah what what was it about gabe that that said to you that it was the right thing to do to hand it to him even though you were still going to play another year yeah well the, the thing was i uh, uh i was kind of getting at the end of my career i, I was six games out of a uh, thousand games right at 993 or something games uh and I'm like, okay, I, I just, I just want to, I just want to finish the thousand games. When you get that close, you, you want to, you want to finish it. But like, m my role was kind of diminishing. I, I was, you know, uh, not, you know, I was obviously not the same player what I was earlier in the career. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, you know, that time I think GM was Greg Sherman. I think and we're, we had a conversation. I'm like, listen, if if I'm gonna be like a, you know, third line guy or fourth line guy, I mean, I, I don't think it's really appropriate to be a captain really that's that's what i at least felt that time let's give it to someone else and 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 uh you know he he brought a uh, gabe's name let's let's give it to someone who is young and he's going to be captain for a long time uh i think same time someone get it got it in on other team got it really young too someone was a captain was it crosby or someone else uh anyway so gave it to gabe and i think it was an absolutely right decision uh, and you know. We have a great question here from the chat, a super chat. Thank you very much, Josh. He wants to know, what was the Red Wings rivalry right, like for a player actually on the team? Did uh, you hate them as much as the fans yeah, well, did? If, actually, it was, it was phenomenal. So I was so my first uh, year was 98-99 season. So probably footer went you know, through it. Like, I think it started in 96, 97 yep. was the, like, the, 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 the tough stuff. But anyways, uh, even uh, my first year in the league, you knew like these are, these are not normal games. They're <laughs> special games. Everything was hyped up. Fans talk about it weeks before the you know we met Red Wings. Uh, players got into it more. Uh, it, they were phenomenal uh, battles, and you knew at some point in the playoffs you got to go through Red Wings, or they had to go through us. Uh, that that's how it was. Uh, pre salary cap era in the West, you had us Red Wings, Stars, and Blues really. He knew it's going to be between these four teams. Yep. And we'll get, that, that's, that's what happened. Yeah. We'll get to all your Super Chats in a little bit, I promise. <laughs> we appreciate you also so very much. Uh, Milan, look, you, you came on before the show and said you think this is the Avs year. I, I do think, yeah. <laughs> I, I believe so. You know, I think sometimes you have to uh, pay your dues a little bit uh, to, to get there. And, and I think the Avs did that in the last couple of years that – they were putting, I mean, obviously last year they won the President's Trophy, so uh, they were the heavy, heavy favorite. Uh, but still, it's not easy uh, to get it done in the playoffs. It, 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 you have sometimes you have to go through adversity. You learn from things when went wrong and uh, things you did right. And so, more, more, more playoff experience you have, it's obviously better. And, and I think they're getting in the era now that I do believe. This could be it. Awesome. I don't want to argue with the man. Yeah. yeah. Amen to that. <laughs> Amen to that. I'm not wrong. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Jared would take it. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. I have no doubt he yeah. would. Uh, I, I do have one. This is a personal question. AJ and I, we're a little bit of draft nerds. Uh, how, how often do you watch your kid up in uh, with the USN TDP? I do uh, quite a bit. So uh, yeah, we Actually, this year we're not living in Colorado. We're renting in Michigan and and staying with with him. Yeah, it's it's great experience. He's uh, you know, uh, I think it's a great concept. Over the years, the uh, a lot of really good players came out of the program. Uh, I mean, you have Patty Kane, Aston Matthews, these guys. So, uh, great concept. You you put the uh, best kids of the uh, particular age group together and keep them for two years. They practice together. They push each other. Uh, the you know the level of practicing is awesome 
So uh, I think it's a great concept. Uh, probably I know other countries are looking into a model and just kind of follow the model because it's obviously for USA Hockey has been uh, it's been a jackpot. Yeah, awesome man. Yeah. AJ Blaze. Anything else to add? I mean, we've talked a lot about Pierre Lacroix tonight, and we haven't really yeah. asked you yeah. much about him. You know, what is uh, – we've been asking the other guys, you know, what's your favorite Pierre story? Uh, so, for, first of all, like, Pierre, Pierre was uh, kind of like almost like a father figure for me. Uh, he was really – he was great to me, obviously, you know, great family man. Uh, it, it, it was the, – the feeling throughout the, uh, the, the whole organization was – like family first, like he, uh, you know, you have the common saying that uh, some GMs don't want to get too close to players because if you have to trade them, that that probably you know doesn't doesn't feel right. But Pierre was the opposite. Like he was, he had a really good relationship with all the players. Obviously, at some point he had to trade some guys, and 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 it was heartbroken uh, breaking for him. But uh, he he was really good. Like we had this thing. Uh, uh, so uh, pre-game meals on the road uh, for a dessert. Pierre, Pierre uh, used to like uh, a strawberry and whipped cream, he, and he, he, he used to call it Puff. And uh, <laughs> he always asked me, like, hey, he called me Puff. He goes, hey, Puff, do you, do you want some Puff Puff? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So, so after, after the, uh, the uh, pregame meal, uh, as a dessert, like, we, he used to give me uh, strawberries and whipped cream. But uh, I have a one, one pretty good story. Uh, uh, so we're, we're, in, uh, we're in Nashville one time. And uh, our trainers figured out uh, game jerseys. So they found out after the morning skate, morning skate is around 11.30ish, ends at by noon, right? Game is at 7, 7 p.m. And they uh, realized we don't have a game jerseys. <laughs> oh, so no. massive panic, right? <laughs> Pierre gets on the phone and starts start work, working. Uh, he uh, he uh, figures out, gets private jet, uh, they they put the jerseys on a private jet. There's no passenger. Just just, 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 just the jerseys. So I, I remember we we took a warm up before the game in the practice jerseys. The jerseys arrived. I don't know five minutes before oh the game. Oh my wow. god! It was unbelievable. But he he got it done. Like so, everyone was in, in a panic. But he was calm and, and collected and just figure things out like he always did. And we, we got the jersey. I don't know if you. If you don't have a game jerseys, I, I don't think you can play a game, really. Yeah. I don't, I'm not sure even what would happen, really. Uh, yeah. So this was pretty impressive. You have the jerseys flying on a private jet, no passengers. <laughs> we have one final question here for you. Obviously, Lacroix Hockey brought us here, brought you to us, so thank you to them very much. You are the father of two high-level junior players. What's it like going through that process, and, and was it – what are the challenges that you face that that someone like a Lacroix hockey organization can help with? You mean uh, like uh, facing with with my kids or yes. what I did? No, like you're the, with your kids. With the kids, yeah. So uh, I mean, obviously, it, it is it is it is challenging. Uh, I, uh, you know, like my dad, I always try try to help them, give them uh, advice and stuff like that. But it gets to the point that <laughs> it's funny, but. It, your kids would rather listen to someone else. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what expertise you have. <laughs> are you like, all right? You know, like, are you trying to give them some advice, but they rather to listen to someone else at some point. I'm like, okay. Uh, so that's kind of, it, it gets frustrating sometimes, right? For, for any, any, any parents. Sure. And, and uh, especially this that, I, you know, at, sometimes I could give them advice and they rather take it somewhere else. But now I think it's, it's getting better, better again. Uh, they're like 17 now, but if there was some stretch, then they they wouldn't take it well. Yeah, I so, bet. Yeah, that, so that's challenging. So that's like an example of where an organization like Lacroix Hockey can help, right? And uh, and I don't know. Uh, absolutely. Did you have? Did your kids have agents? Like I don't know. I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, like now, what they don't call you agents, they call you advisors. Okay. Uh, the, the, basically, you don't for legal terms. Yeah. yeah, yeah there's, nothing, <laughs> there's nothing signed. Uh, Till the players make it to pro, if they make it, you sure. Know, uh, but it, yeah, there is there is agents. They uh, go after players early. There are some guys that the special talented guys at 12, 13. They there's already they already have someone. It, 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 it's it's unbelievable how how uh, young you have to go to to get some players too. But you know, 
I believe that for sure. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> I have no doubt that they're they're looking at him unbelievably young. Uh, all right, I'm Blaze AJ. We good? Yeah. All right. Appreciate the time. Yeah, thank Absolutely. you. Yeah. It was thank my, you my so pleasure. much for coming on. My Honestly, pleasure. man, it means a ton to us. Yeah. Yep. Keep keep up the good work, boys. We'll yeah. do our best. <laughs> we'll keep doing it. Absolutely. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> you. Milan Hayduk, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're just we're just gonna keep this thing rolling. Yeah. I'm just gonna keep drinking beer. My man. <laughs> That's the Rudo way right there. Um do we My man right here. As My man right here. Oh yeah, all right, I'll be all right. Can we <laughs> can we hit the super chats before we we dive in here? Eric Lacroix. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> so happy to have him here. Nice. Eric. We're good. All right. All right. Dope. Uh, obviously a, a big night for you, I'm sure, in in more ways than one, but thank you for coming on and and first of all, let me just say thank you to Lacroix Hockey. Is right. we're just getting started tonight, and they've already made it a dope night for yep. us here at DNVR. Well, so. no, thanks for having us. It's been great, and uh, you know what? It's, it's just great to see everyone. You know, it's a, it's good to see the get together, and that's that's what you miss, right? You don't miss playing the game. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like none of these guys miss playing the game. You know, I mean, we all love hockey, but you don't miss playing it. You miss being with the guys, and yeah, that's what yeah. you do. I mean, you can ask anybody that's been in the dressing room. You miss the banter, you miss all the camaraderie, you miss all that stuff, and it's always nice, you know, like last night, a bunch of us got together, and same thing, you know, it's, uh, you know, obviously, this is a great night for us, for our, for our family, and then, uh, you know, it's a great night for my mother, you know what I mean, it puts a little closure sometimes to things, and so it's been great to see the guys, and you got guys from Sweden coming in, and you know anywhere from Boston, and you know it's kind of nice. So I mean, footy's easy, and he's right down the street, but whatever. <laughs> um, easier for some than others. Yeah. Some. <laughs> so it's great. It's great. It's great for us, and uh, it's great to be here, and it's fun, and guys are having fun downstairs, interacting, and everything. So thanks for having us. Uh, the the pleasure is ours. Believe yep. me, I look, I. You've already spoken to your father tonight yep. once, but what can you tell the people? And obviously, you're you're his kid, so yeah, I am biased a little bit, you know. But <laughs> but I've always said, you know, like on a professional side of things, like try to be truthful, not biased, you know. Like and coming from a different organization, and you know, you. You, 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 I came here from LA, and we were in a rebuild, and you know, Gretz had been traded, and. McSorley, Curry, Kelly Root, everyone had been treated. So we were a young, uh, young team, and uh, you know I got here, and I tell you, it's, it's night and day. You know what I mean? Like it, it was. Uh, I can explain it. Like it's that cliche that you know in LA we're always like scared to lose, and then here you were expected to win every night, and there's a big difference. You know, there's a big difference. There's a Nora, and, and, and it's day in and day out. Uh, you know, guys like Patty Wah. Mike Keane, Claude Lemieux, and, and I go back to the Montreal Canadiens mentality, and I got to be honest with you, it is, it's it's a true thing, it, it, it is. I mean, all those years in the 70s, Montreal with the Larry Robinsons and Bob Gainey and those guys, and they instilled that, you know, they installed that, and, like in Patty Waugh and Claude Lemieux and you know, all those guys, and then those guys came in here. I'm not putting down Joe, Joe's a good friend of mine, that's, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying is, even go back to the Rangers, you know, Brian Leach, Mike Richter, Adam Grace, probably three of the nicest human beings in the world. They are. I mean, I, I got a, three of my favorite teammates, and I got to be honest with you, Mark Messier came in there, and he was the bad guy, right? He's the bad guy that came in and got those guys, and then they won a cup, right? It's not, nothing different here. You know, you got Joe, you got all those guys. Next thing you know, you bring that Montreal Canadiens effect, and all of a sudden, it's all about winning. And next thing you know, they win. And it's a true thing because now go back like a couple years later. Who did it? Dallas. Oh, Guy Carboneau, Mike Keane. Uh, Is that? Uh, McPhee. Uh, Bob Gainey was coaching there. Uh, if you're, I mean, it wasn't there anymore. But I'm saying it's all those Montreal Canadian guys. Brian Scruglin, 
Next thing you know, they win the cup. Dallas. I mean, is that... Look, the NHL, there's a little bit of a bad rap when it comes to the old boys club, right? Yeah, yeah. Especially for the new modern players. But is that weird? When when you talk about winners, is is that the type of thing that you're talking about? Dudes that that come in and set a expectation absolutely and it, and it, and it's in, it's every you can feel it you can smell it you, it's practice every day it's the way you conduct yourself the way you, you you do the drills the way you you get the assignments the way you you hang out as a group on the road and you're ready and it's all about winning and i can tell you one thing like i, I was in that dressing room and i played with a lot of great players i've been lucky and uh, but playing here with patty and those guys like you lost the game, and I tell you one thing: like you didn't want to lose two in a row, and the big, the two in a row factor was big, you know, because why? In the playoffs, you lose two in a row, you're probably shit out of luck, right? I mean, it's yeah. just the way it is usually, right? So the whole season, you lose a game, you're not losing that next game, and it's like it starts at you know, you have two days off, you have practice, and it's like oh, it's like the end of the world. And if you're not used to that, you come in here, you're like, wow, these guys are nuts, you know what I mean? Like you know, like whoa, these guys are crazy, you know what I mean? But but those guys were winners, and they wanted to win, and that's why you never saw those teams lose a lot, like two in a row. You never saw it, and there's a reason for that, you know. Is that is that what they're gonna take tonight? Well, I think so. The next two days is gonna be miserable for them. Well, yeah. When I say miserable, it's like you know, it's you drill down, get back to work, sure. and you know, of course. And and if, if you look at tonight, they're missing some key pieces. That's not yeah. themselves. No it's doubt. I mean, we all no know doubt. That. Everyone knows that, but. Once you get that, it doesn't matter. Go back. I'm going back to those old teams again. You know, like I remember, like we were missing seven, eight, nine guys, and I think we went on the 12 or 13 game. I think it's a franchise record still. Yeah. Like, and, and again, Billington was in net. God bless him. You know, what I mean, <laughs> love the guy, but you know, he was in net. Patty was hurt, and uh, you know, uh, and he's a good friend of mine. Like, you Billington know. catches some stray bullets over here. <laughs> I love Billington. He's a good friend of mine. Is it the, is saying, it the DNVR pod? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, myself and Ren- Rene Corbett and Yeller and those guys. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, the big boys were out. You know, I think Peter was out, Lemieux was out, Kaminsky was out. Big guys were out. You know, next thing you know, if you, if you, if you believe and if you instill that stuff, you get in there and you, you win games and it doesn't bother you. And I think they've done a good job the last few years with the injuries. I think yeah. Bednar does a good job. Like, you know, hey, no excuses and next man up mentality. So they'll be fine. they got a good team here. And. You know, obviously, it would have been nice at the end of the day. Would have got Do you see a little one. bit that of that and like McKinnon, Landis Cog, kind of yeah, like? I think so. I mean, I, I'm not too familiar with Nate. You know, obviously, I'm working here. I'm familiar with with Gabe and and Eric Johnson and guys like that. So those guys got it. You know, they yeah. they, they have it. And Ryan O'Reilly. You know, you kind of heard them tonight. But yeah. uh, you know, Ryan's another kid that it's got that in him. And you can yeah. see he won the Stanley Cup, right? Yeah. You know, there's a reason. There's a reason those guys win. You know, there's an aura about them. They know how to. How to do it? They do it in clutch time. So, uh, this team's gonna be fine. It's gonna be an exciting year for them. So, for sure, I think I'd, so. I wanna. You don't have to answer this if you don't want sure. to. Uh, Nathan McKinnon in practice is known to make things a little bit spicy. <laughs> we'll put it. He'll throw a stick into the stands. Yeah. He'll dress down a teammate. Who know. who was like that when you were when you were around? Uh, yeah, I mean. I, for me, maybe uh, closest to that. Everybody leads in their own ways, you know. Like you would have never seen Joel do that. You know? And I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm saying would have never seen that. I, I would say Claude Lemieux, probably the guy that's uh, <laughs> a little bit of a got a little fire, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Where are you going? <laughs> You're supposed to go left here on the PK, not right. You know, and he's, you know, he was a little crazy like that. Uh, you know, I would say that's the club. But again, Claude Lemieux, wherever he's gone, I'm. Success follows him, yeah. Well, I don't care. You got to live with them. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> he's heavy, he's you got to live with them. No, but I say that. I, again, another one of my great friends. I love the guy. He's intense nice, man. Great, well, he's an intense man. Yeah. And, and it, for some people, can't take that. Yeah. Know? Is it easier to live with a guy like that when you're uh, when you're on the winning side of things? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, Justifies it a little. Yeah, no, you want guys like that on your team. I mean, this again, Pepe was another guy like that. I mean, it's again the Montreal Canadiens mentality, and it's uh, you know sometimes it's demanding and and it's not for everybody. I go back to let's say Timu uh, Solani. I know he had a he had an injured knee that year, you know, but I think Timu learned a lot. I think he came in here. Uh, you know, being in Anaheim, kind of a, you know, 
again, I'm not bashing the Mighty Ducks, but they were a two-man show. I'm in Poly Korea, and, you know, I, you do things a certain way, then you get here, and it's like, oh, this is, like, crazy. It's day in and day out, and... And I think that team will learn a lot. And then the next, you know, next thing you know, a couple. I mean, he goes and wins. Yeah. He goes and wins and does it. He was outstanding. Oh. He's one of my favorite players of all time. So, how but, nice to teach him those lessons. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. You know, like I, I'm saying, I, I think you you would ask him, he would tell you. I think you learn a lot here from those guys. You know, um, and I think anybody can learn a lot from those guys. There's a yeah. reason you win. There's a reason you lose. There's a reason you win. So, it was good. From from the outside, the last couple of years, how much how much do you think that the Avalanche have needed a a Quad Lemieux type of guy, kind of a guy to come in and you know they all know Nate, they're all familiar yeah. with Nate and kind of kind of how he is, but uh, a, a prickly personality that that pushes them where they really need to go. Yeah, you know, in hockey, some teams call that a little bit of whiskey. You know what I mean? Like they they want some different. You know, not just wine drinkers. They want a whiskey drinker. You know what I mean? And I know and. In Calgary, we used that a lot when I was working with them the last few years. And, you know, you try to find that guy. It's a little different nowadays. Uh, the, the generation is different. Let's not kid ourselves. You know, it's different. But, yeah, I mean, you got to find those guys. And they're important. I think if you look at Tampa Bay, you know what I mean? And Barkley, Goudreau, Coleman, I think they filled that role. You know what I mean? They went in there, disrupt things, not just the cuteness of everything in Tampa. Next thing you know, they win two cups. There's a reason. I mean, talent will take you, you know, a lot of places. You can't win without talent, but you need that grit. You need those guys, you know. And I think they had a great mixture here. And I think they'll, uh, you know, I think this year, I think adding McDermott will help. I, 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 I've seen this guy a lot the last few years. I'm a big fan myself. And I know some people can say, like, oh, no, you know, he's turned himself into a decent player. It's me. The, pot, <laughs> the, pot, the, pot, I know, I, the rest I of this pod's not going to be a big fan tonight. <laughs> okay, but it does bring a lot. It does bring a lot to a locker room. And did it Did it bring a lot to the locker room when he got walked by Braden Shen tonight? No. <laughs> We're not going to argue on that. <laughs> I'm just saying he gets 10 minutes of ice time, and that's the most notable thing that he did all night. And I I'm, know. And I'm genuinely curious. Like, I'm not trying to be an asshole here, yeah. but I'm not, not, I'm not minding that I am coming across that way, but yeah. it's like... Where do you find the balance? Because no, the grid and the personality and all yeah. that, like, it's all important. But if you can't, if you can't play the game, you no, can't play the can. game. He can. He can. Listen, people have bad nights too, and you know what I mean. It happens. He's gonna bring at the end of the but day. But a hundred of them <laughs> out of a hundred, <laughs> he'll be fine. I've seen him long enough. I've seen him many times. You will be fine. What? You'll be fine. I mean, same kind of similar vein of, of hockey here. What do you think of Kadri answering the bell one minute into the the game tonight? I like that. I love that. You know. Yeah. And again, I'm not for violence. I'm not for uh, even Gabe's hit. You know what I mean? Like I'm not. You know, everybody's bashing the Avalanche. They're soft, and you know what I mean. Last uh, year, and um, you're in good company thinking Gabe's hit was clean on well, this spot. I, I'm not saying it's clean. I, I'm <laughs> saying right. like, I didn't mind it. You know what I mean? Like I, you know, thank God nobody got hurt. No. Of course, but, of course. Uh, I, and I love Gabe. I'm a big Gabe fan, so I, I love the guy. And then. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, you play hockey and it's hard and, you know, it's it, it's a tough battle out there. And, you know, those things will happen. You go to hit a guy, a guy goes, I mean, hey, listen, if you don't hit guys, don't hit, you know, then then that never happens, right? But if you do hit guys, I mean, yeah. it's bound to happen, yeah. you know what I mean? So Gabe's not a, you know, not trying so, to hurt anyone, you know. Like, from, from a, say you're Sackick. Yeah. You're trying to build a team. You're looking around, you're saying, all right, what is it that we didn't have against Vegas? All right, well, we need to toughen up a little bit. We want to toughen up a little bit. We want to get we want to get our hands dirty, or we at least want to get more comfortable when things go that way. Yep. Maybe not necessarily toughen up, but like you wanna you wanna be more comfortable when things get rough like that. Okay, great. But doesn't it just come down to the same guys? Like when they get to the postseason this year, aren't we gonna be having the same conversation? Nathan McKinnon's got to be the guy that answers. It's got to be Gabe Landeskog and Miko Ranton, and it's got to be Kale McCarr. And like, although the rest of these things are fringe guys, but isn't the majority of this going to be? Well, it, it, I, I, your, I, I, your big guns got to got to be firing on all cylinders to get you a cup. Well, I think we're lucky here. If you go back and we're talking about the Avalanche show, I mean, at the end of yeah. the day, those guys delivered. I'm a big Joe fan. I'm a big Peter Forsberg. Definitely. Fan. I'm a big uh, Claude Lemieux. Valley. Those guys delivered. Those yeah. guys delivered. Footy, Borky. I mean, those guys were paid to deliver, and they delivered. Definitely. And at the end of the day, yes, it comes down to McKinnon, Landis, Scott. I mean, you're, you're, those are your top guys. You're not yeah. going to win 
without your top guys performing. And that's any team in the league. The other guys will help. You we get know. a graphic with that quote on it. Oh, <laughs> I mean, it is true. I mean, yeah. it's just it is what it is. And then goaltending, right? Goaltending has to be there. You can have a great game. Goaltending's yeah. not there. I mean, it's a tough night. You know true. what I mean? Yeah. Like it doesn't matter. But if you got a guy, and I like Darcy Kemper, I think he's going to be fantastic. I'm telling. I, I do like that. That's not being biased. It's not being. Yeah. A homer here, like it's. I really like him. I really liked him the last few years. I thought he was the best goalie in the league two years ago. So last year he was injured. Yeah, he had his ups and downs, but the year before was dominant. Dominant. Yeah. I saw him probably 10, 15 times, and uh, he was one of my favorite guys in the league. So I, I'm really glad he's here. I think he can be dominant. I think you saw in the first game. It's a 3-1 game. He makes those two key saves, and then boom, they go get that fourth one. Right. Those yep. are what you're talking about, like you know. Well, and then Keith tonight it's the opposite story. Oh, that's why I said, yeah, you that's know. what I mean. Then tonight he didn't do it, and there's mm-hmm. a difference. Here's that. Here's the one goal you're missing, um, and, dude, and you'll learn a lot. You got two points it. in the standings, <laughs> and then you didn't. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. And then you'll see, the, you'll learn to. Uh, he'll, he'll. Hey, listen, this is a new season. It's early in the season, and those guys will learn. And I go back to Tampa Bay. Look at their season two years ago at the start of the year. They were. They weren't very good. The first I mean, the, twenty game. They knew what the business was about, right? Yeah. The playoffs is what mattered. Hey, you can win in the regular seasons, and it, you know, and you won't win in the playoffs. There's a certain way you got to play, and then if you, and it, that's what I was saying earlier. It's day in and day out in practice. It's an aura about the way you you do it, the way you do things. Sure, you can win a game four or two, but you got lucky, and then you all know that in the playoffs you wouldn't have won that game. You know, yeah. those guys know that, and I think that's. That's going to be up to, you know, Bednar and Nolan Pratt and uh, Ray Bennett and, you know, to instill that every day, too. And sure, it comes from the players, but also as a staff to say, like, hey, we got away with that one tonight. Well, yeah. we won, but we won, you know, in, 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 in April, or whatever, June, whatever it is now, playoffs, but the dates are all messed up, but yeah. uh, you know what I mean? So then it's a different game. So it's awesome. And I think once those key players start seeing the postseason a little bit more, understanding what it takes, they're going to come back and learn from it, hopefully, right? Like, no, that's what yeah, you're yeah, hoping yeah, from, from. And it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. I don't care what people say. They're like, oh, this guy makes that kind of money. I, I tell you, yeah, there's a reason, you know, because they're, they're the best guys and they're the ones that have to deliver. And you got to live yeah. with that pressure. And that's where, you know, again, I'm going to have like fanatic too, but, like, you know, where Peter, Joe, those guys were unbelievable. I yeah. mean, just to yeah. do it day in and day. And that's what. Again, McKinnon has not done yet. I mean, I, I, you're going to say, well, he's got a lot of points. No, I know, but you're talking about in that game seven then, or that overtime <laughs> or the clincher or Joe was always there. You know, yeah, you're down right. one. Joe's got the puck with God, a few minutes yeah. left. And I'm not saying Nate doesn't have good I'm not saying that. Oh, sure, he's got a gazillion points. Well, it's just that out. Joe did it, and Nate is yeah. still trying yeah. to get there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. yeah. That's it's Joe, history Joe versus future. Again and again and again and again. And I think when you do it, and then Joe will tell you, like, once you do it, once you taste it, like, you want to do it again. Like, I don't know. I never won, so I don't. I have no idea. But <laughs> yeah, where, guys, where is he? Let's ask him. Yeah, I know he's down there. <laughs> but it's, uh, you know what I mean? It's Once you taste it, like, Patty Wah, those guys were nuts. Like, yeah. uh, you know, or Wayne Gretzky. If you, if you talk to Wayne, he'll tell you, like, he just, he had five goals, and he, oh, I want six. I want seven. You know what I mean? Like, that's, those guys are wired Never differently. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think that's why they were successful. So, one, I mean, Crosby, look at down every team, right? Look at Tampa right now. You got Brain Point and those guys. You know what I mean? Guys like that. Oh, uh, Hedman. I mean, look at Chicago. Look at L.A. You know, I'm talking about the last 10, all the years. All the winning teams. Yeah. yeah. Well, of course. The, yeah. the big all guys those teams that won a bunch of cups. Yeah. But the big guys deliver. There's no such Shocking. thing as the big guy did not deliver. Yeah. It doesn't exist. Then he's not the big but guy, you do right? You occasionally yeah. need the two game goal, the two goal game from Max Talbot in Game Seven to get through a series. Absolutely. Sometimes you gotta have. That's it. right. But those guys help. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Then they're not the key piece. You don't yeah. get there without Max the other Talbot's, guys performing. Yeah, Max Talbot's not why they're in Game Seven. He just <laughs> helped them get through it. Absolutely, and that's why there's a lot of guys like that. And they had all those guys here for years too. Yeller, all those guys, all guys that just. Yeah, where's kinda, he at? He's down there somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. Eric, this night at the DNVR bar wouldn't be possible without you, without LaCroix Hockey, no. without the Avs Alumni Association. Yeah. Do you want to tell the good people what y'all are all about at LaCroix Hockey? Well, you know what? We're trying to get organized here and uh, get going and help young families, you know, like uh, maneuver through youth sports kind of, you know. Like, I don't know if you guys have kids in youth sports, but it can be muddy a little bit. It could be dangerous. I mean, not dangerous, but complicated and... What does that mean? And you have, do you have to play on that team or this team? Or yep. you know, we're just trying to help out and then uh, you know have the kids 
at the, you know, we're, we're building that um, at, in the front of Family Sports there. Where we're going to call it the Drill House Sports Center, a sports performance center. Uh, Johnny Mitchell, former Av, uh, David Clarkson, playing the league forever, and uh, myself. So we're building that uh, just for skill development. So there's some fake ice in there and uh, some sensorina type things, which is, uh, you know, that, uh, what do you call it? The that? goalie goggles and you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Stuff. yeah. yeah. We're got all the toys in there, strength conditioning and, you know, the turf and everything. So we're excited. And Lacroix Hockey will go in there to advising and some clinics and some hockey camps and kind of direct families the right way and get some seminars going in there and maybe bring some referees and you know i mean hey how do you conduct yourself as a parent you don't yell at referees and you know stuff like that that's oh, great a lot of parents. that's great <laughs> they need to take that course yeah yeah so it's kind of nice so stuff like that it's that's a, that's awesome we were just down there today for my kids game so we saw all that Did construction going around? on yeah, yeah. yeah i was like oh the ferris wheel's gone yeah it is. <laughs> we painted the wall yeah yeah, yeah yeah hair balloons are going obviously on. it yeah. sounds a lot better that way yep yeah, awesome yeah. Yep. so that's we're yeah. definitely an upgrade <laughs> it's gonna be real fun so but thanks right. for having us it's been great oh no yeah. the, again then, the pleasure is all ours and the yeah, abs alumni real. same thing i think you know it's tough to get an alumni association when you got five years into the league you know but after a certain amount of years like we do now there's a lot of guys living in town and yep. or, or you're the minnesota wild and you haven't had very many good players well yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then you got johnny Lyles has done a fantastic job at cal quincy so now we're trying to uh, they all they they have their own we have our own 501c now stand on your own legs and you know you're going to see us being involved a lot more in the community and i think the landslide is has changed a little bit with COVID, you know, different rules for the players. Yeah. And I think it's important to to be visible in the community. I think, like, uh, you can use the alumni a lot more. And even in come and watch games with you guys here at, the, you know, at this place, fantastic yeah. venue, and it's fun, you know what I mean? And guys like it. Hey, hey, listen, don't kid yourself. Guys like footy and stuff, like, they, you know, they like it sometimes. You know, they, they're kind of scared, <laughs> a little bit of limelight. You know, yeah, and you let's it, go. You know, but, uh, Listen, no one knows me, that's fine. But a guy like, you know, those big guys, you know, like after a while, it's kind of nice to, to come back and embrace it with the fans downstairs. And it's been great. So the guys are having a great night and it's been fun. So awesome. Right. ask for more. Well, it's been pretty cool. I, I keep looking over my shoulder and I yeah. just like casually you look down. You look down, down the just, corner and see a who's watching, who. Like, yeah. There's Milan Hayduk right now yeah. talking to a bunch of fans, signing some stuff. Scott Parker's hand was just engulfing somebody uh, a minute ago, and it's like, it's just, it's just cool to see. It's cool to see some of the guys who have helped make the Avalanche organization so memorable and so important to so many of our lives. And that's what we've been talking about, honestly, the last couple of days. Is we got to do more often. You know, we want to get together more. Sometimes it's, it's not enough to just wait for. Like the summer funeral, or you know what I mean? Like it just happened to be mine. But. Real quick, we have someone in the chat asking, can they find you a website for LaCroix Hockey or no, anything yeah, like that? No, we're, we're building all that right now. Nice. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably three, four more weeks, and everything's going to be ready to go. There you and go. Then, uh, we'll go from there. So, yeah, it'll be fun. Come on down, and it's going to be for anybody. And it's not just pros and, and uh, you know, like a Division One players. It's going to be for anybody, all the associations. And for me, it's about, I love the game of hockey. And if a, if a house leaguer, which I love house league, you know what I mean? It, there's a level for anybody. If a house leaguer's goal is to play uh, in competitive uh, travel hockey and then we can help them do that, awesome. You know what I mean? Then yeah. we do our job, you know? And then, or if it's a high-end guy that's trying to go play D1, then we can do that too. So it's for everybody. And I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. And again, no offense to the Ferris wheel and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great though, this. because like, I, you know, I'll say offense to the Ferris uh, wheel. <laughs> You know, you, your hangout spot. <laughs> <laughs> Don't live lollipop park. Oh, no. No, but, it, you know, as a parent looking at the landscape of hockey, right, like there's so many avenues to go and you really don't know what to do yeah. when you're getting into it, especially if you've moved somewhere, you know, so it's just yeah, like. And it's always better on a different team. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, grass you know, is always move, greener. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Bladder calls chat. Sorry. I love you all. <laughs> all right. Yeah, you could have just wrapped it yeah. up. Yeah, I don't. I all right. I. No. I didn't know. So I guess I guess we're we're pretty much done. I think we're gonna go downstairs and we're gonna mingle with everybody. We appreciate everything from you, man. Yeah. Awesome. Thank and it, you uh, guys. Yeah. Awesome it was a, it was a great it was a great night honoring your father. And thank you very much. I think I speak for everybody when I say that we we all have enjoyed appreciating what he's done to enrich all of our lives. 
So I much appreciated. It guys have been great. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, looking forward to collaborating on future projects. I think sure. I think you're going to be a guy that we see a lot on the pod. And I'll be moving back. forward. I'll be back. So I love I love talking hockey. Yeah, um, I guess I guess we're getting out of here. I, this is Rudo's <laughs> job. So. Bye, Rudo. Uh, thank you to everyone for watching. Thank you to everybody for watching. This has honestly been an amazing night. Uh, it would have been it would have been great had we been able to to rotate more of the guys on. But I'm not going to complain at all about no, what we got. It was, this all. was great. This was a lot of fun, and uh, we are going to go hang out with everybody. We so you guys enjoy the rest here. of your night. Bye, guys. <laughs>